are um, provided uh, by by the by the commission. The physicians are provided by the commission itself. You have to be a, a commission, at least in Canada, you have to be a commission uh, recognized um, uh, physician, and you're you're on uh, duties for that. Now, the commission can in you know can bring people in uh, if you're in a smaller province like Nova Scotia, you know. Uh, you know, at the at the last minute, um, provided the, um, and Nevada, I'm not. In, I I believe they are still commissioned. You know, physicians that are there, so I don't really know what that will mean. Um, I don't know if there's additional physicians there. Um, you know, OC, for instance, has its own. Uh, will oversee. Uh, you know, so for their events in the background, like it's kind of an added. Physician. Generally speaking, the okay. Sorry, I gotta apologize. We had a little bit of a connection problem here, so we no. actually have to reintroduce you and sure. start some of these conversations again. Okay. Uh, so those people who are just waiting in the um, channel for the live to start, I apologize. There was a subtle technical issue that I missed earlier, um, but we're live now. My name is uh, Dr. Rich Hills, and I'm with my colleague and friend, uh, Dr. Savvy Day, who is a Cardiologist works daytime here as an associate professor here at Western University, but also is a member of the Ontario Athletic Commission and is a fight doctor. Has previously worked uh, for UFC fights as, as well as some amateur uh, boxing and other events. Also has his own blog, fightmd.com, that's in the description of this video below. We were just chatting a little bit about uh, Power Slap and some of the issues related to the relationship of doctors and the athletic commission and, and about the independence. But before we get into that, once again, I'm going to get you to repeat yourself a little bit here. Just tell us a little bit of how you came yeah. to start and working uh, as a fight doctor and what, is, what your role would be uh, with the Ontario Athletic Commission. Okay, great. Well, thanks, Rich, for, for having me again. Uh, thanks to the members that we have on, on board now. Um, so, you know, I'm originally from Nova Scotia. I've been in Ontario since about 20. Uh, I'm just a big fan of uh, martial arts, martial arts, and of UFC. I've probably been to five events, personally trained. Uh, I've grown up doing karate. I've, um, and so I've always, you know, had uh, at, at my gyms and stuff, been friends with people. I've been fighters. Uh, when I was in Nova Scotia, I would help a lot with um, getting their um, uh, their fight physical done. And that just kind of evolved into me helping out with amateur events and got to meet uh, some of the, uh, the physicians from, from that commission. And, that, that, and then, you know, from there, more opportunities came. You know, Halifax twice, um, uh, 2014, 2017, I got to be a ringside physician for both of those events. And then I, I, I moved to London in 2016 through some friends and connections I have here, Dr. Faisal Ramon, uh, others. Uh, you know, I was encouraged to, and I've been involved with the Ontario Athletic Commission last couple of years. Um, and for the most part, nowadays, a lot of the screening or if there's questions about uh, fitness to fight from a cardi cardiology standpoint, normal EGs, um elderly patient who undergoes a stress test, I usually screen those. And I, I've just been a little bit busy on the personal side, so um, I, I hope to get back and a little more of the, uh, the ringside stuff uh, soon, but I'm definitely on the docket for a while. So that's my story. And then, you know, uh, many moons ago, 2014, uh, I started the blog fightmd.com, it was kind of a labor of love in terms of talking about some of, uh, some of the health issues that I thought were um, endemic to MMA. So things like concussion, cardiovascular fitness, um, you know, they're, they're all out there. The blog probably needs a bit of a, an, uh, and an update. Uh, but I was getting some, some uh, really nice feedback and opportunities from the blog um, when I up there. That's kind of my story. We know I have tons of questions for you. I'm super excited. But before we get into that, I really want to know a bit more about commissioning of sports and what is the role of, you said the Nevada, uh, Nevada Athletic Commission is probably the one commissioning yeah. uh, power slap because yep. uh, that's really our focus today. But what about uh, you know, other jurisdictions? Really, what are the commissions? Yeah. And what do they do? Yeah. So what the, what the commission is, uh, is basically it is a sanctioning body uh, for uh, professional fighting uh, and combat sports. Um, so if somebody is holding an event, whether it's amateur or professional, they have to apply um, for a license to hold the event. And uh, it's done at 
like in state level. And typically what the uh, sanctioning body will do is then ensure they will have their own um, group of physicians will uh, go through uh, the safety of the events uh, on an individual basis. So they'll, they'll typically um, review the fight application. Um, from there, um, that's uh, fighter safety. They'll assess uh, safety at the events, as well as usually the commission and uh, its own uh, uh, members or executive members to directly present it. Um, that's so do they um, ever like prevent a fight from happening? Like oh, how yeah. does, like, course, can, have you been involved in anything yeah, like that? Course, can you give me an example of like yeah. a situation? Yeah, so you know, I've, I've been like with keeping complete anonymity, uh, you know, I've had to review uh, fighters files where there was an abnormal cardiac finding, all that an echocardiogram, um, or the ECG was abnormal. He did a bit of a deeper dive and um, you know, there's, uh, you know, there's one particular fighter, I can't name it names, uh, but very well known. Um, basically, there was a concern from a cardiovascular standpoint, fitness, um, uh, to, um, so that, that is one way that, you know, then, then, you know, more information needs to be thought. Um, directly talk to that cardiologist and then make a decision on whether the fighter um, it becomes very difficult. There's often a lot of um, uh, deep consideration, especially at the professional level, um, because if you have a fighter that has um, done multiple fights and then you're looking at potential not license, uh, that could impede their fa their ability to and further you don't get licensed. It's a big black mark. Um, if you get turned uh, at an amateur level, um, that's where a lot of injuries can occur. Uh, oftentimes. Uh, you know, the, at Nova Scotia would ask me, would they show me some matchups? And there could be huge mismatches for an amateur. Have some O and O or do a first amateur fight, but they're a world champion. And okay. it doesn't show up. Right, right. And so, so there can be mismatches yeah. as well. And so, you know, um, and sometimes, <laughs> you know, you, you give your opinion. So, yeah, there are fights that, that have been canceled. I've looked at um, stress tests. Uh, results that I didn't like. Uh, I've said I'm, you know, and then it's not an I'm sore. It's like I don't think that's what fitness, uh, something like, like a boxing. Yeah. So yes, that that has happened, and that's that's part of the, and part of the commission's duty is to ensure uh, fighter safety uh, that is done through uh, the the physician. Are commission is that a complete independent body? They're not. They're not. The doctors involved with commissioning aren't in any way affiliated with the organizations running these. Is that correct? Or no, what's the relationship no, there? no, no. Typically not. But I mean, for instance, I um, you know, I may have because I train. I may have friends that participate in martial arts competitions. There's never a direct conflict. Right. I would never be directly involved in their promoting fight. Promoting event. Yeah. No. No. Like absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Generally, yeah, no. 100%. No. Yeah. So, uh, is there an example of like a a professional fighter that had a problem with the commission that uh, that you're aware of in recent years at all? I'm just curious if you can give me an example of someone that, that may be a household name but possibly had had trouble. Um, you know, like there were there's some that you can look at online. Uh, for instance, uh, Dan Hardy, a very famous UFC fighter, had Wolf Parkinson fight. Um, you know, that's that's in to, okay. to look at. Yeah. And was that a problem with commissioning at one point for him? Yeah, or? yeah. So, and I, I don't know if it was the commission itself or his own personal decision. When people have uh, Wolf Parkinson's white syndrome, just for your viewers, it's an arrhythmia that has a very small risk of sudden cardiac death or dying. Mm -hmm. And so the mm -hmm. way around it is, um, so when you put somebody through a uh, big ruling side of uh, mixed martial arts, um, then, you know, a, a competition, there is theoretically risk that that level of exertion Small, but it, yeah. it's not zero. So um, I don't know, don't recall the details because obviously it's a different, not something I was directly involved with, but um, you know, in that case, there would be a treatment plan like that. Right. Um, right. You know, and then going on. Similar, I've, I've screened a fighter for WPW with, with no symptoms. I've asked experts uh, who have, I, my colleagues, more experts, 
myself in this country, and you know, we made a uh, we made a decision to, uh, you know that it was okay for the person uh, to do a, to, uh, to amateur. Right, so it's, everything is kind of individual case by case, but I think maybe later on in the uh, podcast we'll talk a little bit about some cardiac things that could yeah. prevent fighters from going. Yeah. But what I'd like to do is let's let's switch gears to power slap, which is really yeah. the inspiration about uh, this yeah. video today. Yeah. Um, I'm a fan of and martial arts yeah. and the, the the combat, you know, the the contest between two athletes uh, is one of the things that excites me. And then here we have an event that strikes me as um, essentially, you know, trading brain cells for entertainment. Yeah. Um, and uh, so the audience is aware of Power Slap is an event uh, promoted by Dana White. And really what he's, the event really involves strikers with an open hand, trading blows one after the other, no real defense mechanism in place, and you either get knocked out or it goes to the judge's decision. But at the end of the day, um, you know there is a, an unimpeded blow uh, to the head. Uh, now I'm I'm glad to say that some of the mainstream companies, uh, I think Warner Brothers, has dropped power slap, yep. but Dana White is absolutely planning on continuing on Rumble and doing a season two, so it's a relevant thing, and I think as a doctor, it's important to speak out my concerns, hmm. and so I'd like to hear what your thoughts are. What's your like, initial impression when you when you saw power slap, and, and as a, someone who's involved in martial arts from a doctor's perspective, oh. you know, what's your first gut instinct? I'm not a fan of power slap. I, I have trouble even watching. I think they're, they're quite brutal. I mean, you know, let's just go, let's dig, uh, dig a little deeper. So if you look at kind of even when um, MMA was uh, commissioned, a bit of an uphill battle, I believe the year was 2011. Um, and, you know, a lot of the issues surrounded fighters thought it was, uh, some people wanted headgear to be worn, uh, certain strikes banned. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, mar mixed martial arts for the most part now, because involved uh, the importance on fighter safety brutal it's and when you compare that and the issue that, that I can amateur and professional MMA often you see a lot less in professional hmm. reason being that amateur very little and right. to me part of combat having so, um, what I know about powers is basically um, to a point, artist blow Paul um, to the person's doctor standing behind them, catch them. Basically, the I've seen posturing and the clips, yeah, you know, the absolutely. patients, uh, the, you know, the ladders out. Um, but this is just unpredictable. Um, and, and you're basically having a knockout pretty much every time unopposed. And, you know, um, I, I, and, uh, I'm not a fan of it. I don't think, um, uh, you know, what, what, what sort of, uh, characterizes sport these days, uh, is, is really changed in definition. You know, you have these kind of squid games type of athletic events to now power slap, um, you know, bare knuckle fighting, which, uh, you know, I also have a little bit of trouble watching myself. Um, it's it's all very different, um, and but I, uh, you know, the concussion rate. If somebody goes out, um, you know, that's a grade three concussion, and you know, the the best thing for that person is to have brain rest and everything else. Yeah. But sometimes what happens is the person's out slightly, but they're able to continue, and then they're going another round to right. see who has the hardest one. Yeah. And um, you know, the ratings did not do well. I, if it was TBS or TNT where it was on, right? Um, you know, there's been a lot of outcry for it. It's been sanctioned in Nevada. I was reading. Uh, I was reading some news stories that basically say that they wanted tougher, tougher um, sanctioning of the sport. What does tougher mean? It means they define that basically the strike has to be with the carpal bones, and it, it can They and they took away cupping. Okay. Okay. But most concussions do occur from the cheekbone, uh, you know, and below. And so the I, idea was they're supposed to strike below the eye level. Uh, yeah, and they're, exactly. They're, they're trying to say, well, the face itself. 
it can play a bit of a concussive yeah. reduction effect. I mean, yeah, we yeah. Do, it is a thing. We don't understand that there's a, that concept yeah. rather than just immediately there, there, transiting there's, into there's the a, brain. There's a target area that's been identified. Uh, don't quote me on the definition of it, but it's basically like the facial bone onwards, yeah, using uh, up until the carpal bones of the hand. Um, but you know what? These these are if people think an open hand strike is you know like like no joke. I mean you know speaking of joke. I mean ask Chris Rock. I mean he still has concussion event mm. effects. You know a year <laughs> oh, later. Really? Okay. Speaking about it, you know just after I watched his Netflix show. But I mean this is a side note. I um no I'm not a, I'm not a fan of it. I don't I don't think that that event would necessarily be sanctioned in every state or or in or in a, in a Canadian province. I'd be surprised if it was. Well, the problem I have with it is that, you know, you're saying they defined this target area, the couple bones where they're hitting. I mean, the problem is I'm sure they're doing that with consultation with doctors, right? Yep. And so I struggle with like so who are these doctors that are like cool with this? You yeah. know what I mean? Like yeah. like and I mean, I guess it's just everybody can be an extreme outlier at yeah. some point, I suppose. I don't well, know. Well, you know, the whole medicine behind uh, concussion and combat sports um, is really ongoing and longitudinal. Even, uh, you know, CTE, which is a sequelae of it. Uh, Do you often, understand what CTE is? For yeah, the chronic audience? traumatic encephalopathy. So that's the link that they've had with NFL players. And that's also been described in some boxers, um, you know, some you know WWE wrestlers. And, you know, they wonder about the link between MMA and CTE. Mm. And oftentimes it's felt to be, the mechanism is uh, what they call these contra-coup um, injuries where you know you, you, you hit one play one you know you hit one part of the body your brain kind of sloshes back and forth right. and then over time you know you can get CT and look all, all combat sports and concussions uh, they occur in, in football they occur in boxing they occur in MMA as well and one of the arguments I saw from the the power slap organizers is that look MMA is three to four hundred blows yeah per, you know yeah uh, you know a power slap is just a few right but you know it's um, uh, an unopposed blow with zero defense, I think, is very different than checking punches. Yeah, that's you know, right. you know, ducking. You know, w working on the ground a little bit. Having even the four ounce glove, I think, makes a difference over no glove. Right. And so, uh, doing direct um, comparisons uh, between uh, you know brutal brutal sports is is difficult. You know, you, there yeah. are a couple, a handful of studies I'm I'm familiar with. Uh, you know, there's a fighter health study, which is a, you know, a huge, um, uh, you know, study being done in uh, Las Vegas through Cleveland Clinic, Nevada, uh, Las Vegas, looking at uh, brain function over time. That's still an ongoing study. So we don't really have all the answers, but I, I can tell you that uh, for me, I am not a fan of power slap personally, and I can't see it being sanctioned elsewhere and I think they just say you know we've removed cupping yeah and, uh, I mean I don't I, I don't really buy it and I and you know what just anecdotally the one of the girls on the show uh, Courtney Olson said she's not been the same a lot of the fighters are just not really the same after this mm. and um, you know and the and you know the interesting thing is there's not really a public appetite for it they got pulled by the major network um, for just not doing well. Yeah, and I think there is definitely a difference as a fan uh, when there's less tactics and just like Trading blows for blows. I mean, if there's an element of like you're kind of participating in the assault if you're if you're watching the show and just like you know supporting yeah. it in a strange way. I mean, again, people would argue, well, you know, they know what they're doing, yeah. what they're they know what they're getting into. I guess the question is, where does the ethics lie on that? Because yeah. there is a point where these are you know autonomous individuals are making their own choices. Yeah. Like, how, uh, and I guess this is where commissioning may yeah. play a role. I, I think that, you know, I think that a lot of people were surprised <laughs> that it was um, accepted by the Nevada State Athletic Commission. I mean, that's, yeah. you, you know, that's that's the thing. Do they have a reputation of being a strong, like a good athletic commission with a lot of experience? Because I, I mean, obviously a lot of the big ticket I, fights take place in Nevada so they have history but at the same time um, maybe again there's a there's a competition for uh, people to come to Nevada to watch these sports right they maybe have a conflict yeah. of interest there you know I don't I don't honestly um, know the nuances of that athletic commission but yeah. obviously Nevada is a big uh, you know state for tourism and um, and whether those factors sort of play, you know, in terms of boosting, you know, so what you're getting at is boosting the economy, right? Uh, and, and you know, whether whether they that, work for the government, yeah, yeah, they're, yeah, they're, they're yeah, motivated to have people yeah, and come whether, in whether that and, blurs the yeah. lines. I mean, I mean, I would hope not. I mean, right. you know, I think athletic commissions should really have, um, you know, people's best intentions at heart. And the other thing is too, even with the the, um, you know, I, I like I said, I'm not a fan of power slap. I have trouble watching it. I don't even see the sports side of it. I mean. 
if me and you were going to fight, right. I would not just be putting my chin out there and saying, yeah. hit me as hard as you can. Well, there's something about MMA, which it gives you this sense, even boxing to a certain degree, there's an element of reality in there. Yeah. Like, what if what if two yeah. people came to a disagreement and yeah. they decided to settle their yeah. disagreement? Uh, Anything goes. Yeah, yeah. right? That's, that gets that sense. Whereas, I don't know what a power slaps uh, corollary to real life is. You know, there's no. an element of that. And, and I think... You know, we love fighting because there is something within us. You know, yeah. with men, there's something within you to, yeah. like, that physical contest. Uh, I mean, we evolved to have a bit of that. So um, I think having fighting in a safe way is is really important. I think it's a good oh, yeah, thing. It's definitely. good for society in a lot of ways. Yeah. Um, and so there's – but you got to draw a line somewhere, right? You're not oh, going to yeah. – right? And I always say when it comes to power slap, I'm, I'm like, the fact that you can't see the injury just necessarily mm. happening, these things are happening underneath the surface. Mm. A good example is they wear these little, like, ear plugs um, because I, I presume that's to prevent a tympanic membrane rupture. Oh, okay, okay. Uh, and, you know, if someone got hit in the ear yeah. and they started bleeding out of their ear, oh. that would – change the yeah. whole dynamic right it's the optics right know? but even the optics they provide are pretty gruesome i mean you see somebody go back and i mean we know that's extensor posturing right yeah. i mean that is uh brain damage right, uh, right there defense and uh, then that person gets back up and they they get to do it and you know in real in real life if you get a concussion the big thing is abstaining you know you get a head ct if it's really bad yeah. and having like you know signs of high pressure in the brain but you know the big thing is brain rest mm. and they're just going back and forth and i mean and for what and so i'm not like i say i'm not a fan i don't think i don't view the thing as sport and i think you can even talk about it like for me you know i've i've dealt with friends over the years uh you know being like oh how do you like mma it's brutal and stuff like that but if you actually train you know some of the arts behind it and you see it to me it's it's just beautiful athleticism you know that like you know, and, and a lot of people, even with MMA, they, they liked the, the high kick to the head. Mm. I personally love watching the ground game, right? And I mean, you, there's so many nuances and transitions and strategies in terms of, and even that sport has evolved over time where you see, you know, wrestlers get into it and they're dominating things. And, you know, the athleticism and you see, you know, people from different countries who have strong kickboxing pedigrees and Muay Thai pedigrees are, are now champions. Um, but I just don't. I just don't see that with, with power slap. Power slap, you're just trading concussion after concussion after concussion. And you know what? I, I wrote in one of my blogs, you know, that just as we cheer for these great knockouts in MMA, we should also be cheering for when, when the fighter stands up and that we know that they can go back to their home and their family yeah. and their livelihood. Yeah. And I'm not sure that, you know, with, with power slap, I, I, like I say, it just does not seem like combat sports. It doesn't seem like a sport to me at all. I think it's, and, and and whatever the and you know I think it's something for like, it's really a lowest common denominator mm. type of entertainment. I don't really even know anyone personally who watches it. Yeah. And um you know and but you know they're obviously making some money out there, but I think it's more circus than it is athletic event myself. Yeah, that's a that's a cool phrase. A bit more more circus than a true uh, athletic competition. And I think that's because you know how do you train for. Like, uh, powerful. I, like, I can't even imagine what that training would look like. I mean, I saw one clip where the guy's in the back room and like he's someone's holding up one of these sparring pads and he's just like taking slaps, you know, back and no, he just keeps on. He's, slapping a, he's his, hitting the he's in the sparring pad. Is that the yeah, idea? he's hitting the sparring pad. As, yeah. you know, like like right. somebody would like with a, with a right, jab or right. a hook. He just keeps on going like like that. I'm thinking about the defense. Like, what defense <laughs> uh, training could you possibly do? Like like yeah. ima- like, and I can imagine someone. And this is where you get into things like CT. We talk about yeah. that a little more. Someone saying, "Well, I'm going to train my head to tolerate being hit in the head." Yeah. Right. Yeah. And I think one of the things, and, and uh, you know, I'm interested in your take on this. One of the things about CTE, which I think was interesting, is that you can have someone develop CTE and never actually been diagnosed with a concussion during their career. Yeah. yeah. And that's that. I think is a, a unique thing because, of course, obviously, like we know the concussions do cause permanent changes. I, yep. I've talked about that in my videos before. Um, I'm worried about guys on power slap who, you know, don't seem concussed but are taking it. Because yep. you're taking the hit regardless. Yeah, like every every fighter. Well, you know, there's different grades to concussion. So the knockout is a grade three concussion. The person's out entirely. Yeah. But even mild headache is a grade one. Right. So I think a lot of folks, you know, they, they are, you know, they are getting mild concussions, um, you know, regardless of, of, of what they're doing. And they're Diagnosed pretty, or not. Exactly. Yeah. And, and uh, you know, and I think, you know, there have been a lot of, um, uh, I was actually reading a study recently just, to, you know, sort of uh, prepping a little bit for, you know, to come on here that basically for, from the fires they have in that, um, that heart brain study from the Cleveland Clinic study in Nevada, 
they've actually shown that you know um, things like the number of fights, the number of blows that have been traded, do link to diminished brain volumes and you know different um, and changes in um, like kind of psychomotor. Um, higher level, um, uh, you, you know, um, uh, like cognitive changes. We're circling back to Dana White's point where he said, well, you know, an MMA fighter is going to have 300 hits to the f- head uh, yeah. during a fight versus, you know, two or three big ones, yeah. right? So there is, you, you, would you say there's some truth to that volume, small well, volume well, versus big Well, uh, well we, do, we, do, we do know that higher volume strikes from the one, from this one paper that they published, I believe in the BMJ, uh, recently, does show that the, the the larger number of strikes can, can can link. But I mean, do you really want to make that direct comparative study? I mean, these are not like every single one of these. You, you know, it's pretty much a KO every time. It's a grade three concussion every single time. That's unchecked. And you know, a lot of these, even if you want to go by number, I mean, a lot of these these strikes they would be checked. They wouldn't be unopposed every time, right? I mean, they might be, um, you, you know, who knows? It could be a body shot yeah, in there, right? I mean, right. it's not apples to oranges. No. It's not an exact science, but I think this is where um, common sense and listening to other folks, I mean, there's been, I mean, I'm not a brain specialist, neither are you, but there's been a number of neurologists that have come out against uh, against power slap. Now, c- can you say like, well, these are the same guys that were against MMA. I mean, possibly, but MMA is now sanctioned in pretty much every province and state. Um, in North America, um, and so and that was it. Well, and I think part of that was because they they were able to get MMA to the point where the safety profile yeah, was yeah. was better. Because I, I do remember back in the days of the very early UFCs, oh, right? Yeah. And there were some pretty brutal injuries. There was yeah. a lot more blood on the mat, yeah. that kind of thing. Um, and so you know, rules evolved yeah. very early on. Like it was truly no holds barred. Yeah. And then they you know limited eye gouging, eye gouging yeah. and like and you know fingers, yeah. uh, you know small joint manipulation. Those type of things were removed early on. Yeah. You know, then they added things like I think you have to wear those uh, smaller yeah. gloves. Yeah, the four ounce gloves. Four ounce yeah. gloves. Yeah. So those things have made it made a difference. Yeah. A little element of that. Um, the question is, could there be an evolution of power slap to make it uh, safer? I mean, I, we're struggling to find a yeah. way to do that because you talked about these yeah. like restrictions. Well, but. you know, you know, you know what I think. I think that the public is more savvy than than we we give them credit for. And just look at the ratings. I don't, you know, who knows? I mean, power power slap may be a fringe sport that's always in the background or make it shut down. Um, you know, I don't know. I'm personally not a fan of it. I don't personally know even even the few fighters that I know and I train with that adrenaline and stuff that I've asked about it. Um, none of them watch Power Slap. I mean, it's you know, it's um, you know, I, I I don't think there's a huge appetite for this. But sometimes I don't know the business model. Like you yeah. know, if it's something that's cheap to run and you get a few viewers, maybe you know, if, if it turns a profit, fine. And um, I don't even really know what the average background is to the participant. I think most of them have some kind of uh, combat sports like I saw one of the one of the females involved is a high level judoka um, you know like some of them have some sort of combat sports experience but yeah uh, I was saying uh, uh, the person you're talking about was a uh, high uh, or very legit purple belt in, uh, in BJJ <laughs> so um, there's an element of some of the athletes may have actual experience uh, with combat sports but and this is maybe their breakout opportunity, right? They're not able to compete necessarily in the true MMA world, right? And and I worry about that a little bit. I worry about people who are um, maybe a bit more vulnerable yeah. and might see this as an opportunity, like, oh, I can make a quick buck, or I can do something. Well, you know, it's you know? it's kind of like that old movie, right? Where you know, uh, the guy they need a can for the the local MMA at the you know scene at a bar. Yeah, and they're like, we'll, we'll give you five hundred bucks, and you know what I mean. The guy's just going out to pasture, and you know, like like it's I know it's cliche. But I'm not sure that it's that far off. Um, you know, why somebody would do power slap as opposed to, you know, uh, competing in MMA if they've got those credentials, I don't really know. So who knows? I, I, I Well, again, it, but, I mean, how do you get a professional fight in MMA? Like, uh, like yeah. you know, you got to be yeah, a absolutely. pretty serious yeah, athlete absolutely. to do that. Whereas maybe getting a professional fight in, in power slap, uh, yeah. you're, you're auditioning like you're going to like, American Idol. Yeah. They're like, right? And, and if you watch the show, from my perspective, like Dana's as interested in the story and the personality of these guys as it is. I mean, yeah. it, it struck me as they, they, they it's seem more like, of an American Idol situation they, than it was even a, a, a you, combat sport. You know, they seem like characters, like yeah. the way they kind of, it's, it's a bit like a WWE, like yeah. the way they kind of are marketed and project themselves. Like, you know, you're going to be more polarized uh, towards, you know, a fighter or whatever because he's, 
you know, a farmer in Iowa or, right, you know, right. the, you know, the way. So, so I, I, I think that this is really, um, like I say, I think it's very uh, dangerous what they're doing in terms of um, hiding behind the sport element to something that I think is more circus entertainment. And you know what? There's lots of ways to have entertainment that's not that's not going to hurt anybody, right? I mean, you can if that's your if that's the kind of thing you want to do, fine. But I do worry about uh, even anecdotally what some of the fighters who've been on on or you know performers on Power Slap have have said about about how they felt afterwards. I think that's that'll be the thing. We'll learn a lot more in a, in a year or two when those people are sort of. Uh, you know, it's when it's over, right? Because right now, I imagine there's some rules of what what they can say and that kind of thing, and there's still a desire probably for them to keep Dana White happy, right? I, I worry a little bit about the power of an individual promoter uh, mm. like that. I don't know what you're, if you have any have any opinions there. I mean, I was a little bit worried about asking you because I was afraid you might not be able to, to share everything because I know you want to continue to be involved in uh, athletic commissions. I'm always afraid that bias might, like, could you could a, oh. could a sport promoter say, I don't want this this fight doc here because he's 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 biased against my, my sport? Like, is that a thing I mean, that could happen? I mean, who knows? It's not it's not for them to decide. Yeah. And I mean, like, you're just asking me my opinion. I don't make the big decisions in yeah. terms of, you know, what sport gets sanctioned or not. I mean, I'm. it's just an opinion I have. And, you know, a lot of my principles as a, you know, as a physician are based on, um, you know, it's based on fighter safety. It's mm-hmm. just like the same way, like when me and you are doing our regular job, you know, at the hospital, um, it's patient safety, right? I mean, you know, you're looking out for the, the best, you know, for your patient. And, you know, that's kind of where there's a bit of an imbalance. Like, I mean, I enjoy something. I, I, I think it's enjoyable to watch. But I, I'm always happy when you see a great fight, uh, whether it's MMA or whatever you're watching, and the person sort of, both fighters walk away, no problem. Mm, yeah, absolutely. Like, the last thing you want is to, is to see someone's career end in front of you, right? And I think I can think of a few examples, um, like fractures and things like that have happened. You're like, oh, man, you feel you feel terrible about it, right? Like, no. like you want to see these athletes continue to compete. And, and for me, I mean, like a good, healthy athletic event only makes it better in the long run. Again, yeah. we talked about why uh, MMA is now commissioned everywhere. It wasn't at first. Yep. Um, and it was because of more experience, more understanding, more training, more uh, successfully run events, safely run ve- uh, events. Uh, that's what makes it uh, makes it worthwhile. I guess my question here is, if you're thinking about um, being an athlete in um, mixed martial arts and you're, and, and you're interested in having a not necessarily a professional career, but an amateur career. Do you have any advice for people who are trying to either pick a sport or... Yeah, I mean, I don't know if I'm the right person to ask for that. I mean, but I I think in general, people who've had success that I've seen are, um, you know, because I'm really not... I mean, I'm a a hobbyist in terms of the stuff I train in. I'm not a competitor, but, you know, I think that the people that... uh, I think it's good to cross-train in all uh, pure martial arts. Um, you know, you know, striking, grappling, uh, you know, jujitsu have have good defensive skills, have good foundation in all of them. Um, train with people at a similar level, um, not hurt your partners. I mean, you know, even part of the concussion discussion, if you will, is uh, that people um, oftentimes when they spar before big fights is they don't go all out. You know, mm, they're not okay. going valet tudo style trying to hit people in the head, um, you know, you know, that sort of thing. So, you know, I think that. Um, you know, I, I, and I think that I think amateur is a good place for people to kind of, uh, you know, uh, build their skill set, um, and then before they make the the step up to professional. When I was a younger man, I used to compete a little bit in, uh, mostly in like kickboxing, karate, but did a little bit of BJJ as well. Yeah. Um, and I actually felt I had to drop the striking sports uh, yeah. as I started to move into a career in medicine because I actually found yeah. I, I felt that the risk was higher there as opposed to uh, let's say BJJ for example or judo yeah. um, do, you, do you get a sense that there is a risk difference or, or am I just being yeah. silly and saying well you know what you can you can you know yeah. uh, tear your neck or shoulder up in, yeah. in BJJ just as easily yeah I mean you know I, I mean I'm, I'm just a hobbyist in BJJ but I mean I've torn my knee twice and I mean um, you know, but it's still something I enjoy for yeah. me. It's an outlet that kind of helps me, uh, you know, I meet great people there and I see some of them are, are online. And, uh, you know, I also, uh, uh, uh it's a great way to kind of just, just, it, it's an, it's a mental outlet. It's, it's, for me, it's the equivalent of somebody doing yoga or seeing a therapist. Like when you, when you go there and you're, you're focusing on sort of not getting choked out or, you know, you're, you're trying to choke somebody else out. You don't think about anything else at work and you leave there feeling whatever you did. You feel, I always feel happy when I'm there and when I, when I go, 
Um, I don't. I think both arts are, are different and complementary. I mean, I don't think that. Uh, I think you just have to stay at your level and just kind of like train with people that are safe. Um, you know, there can be a lot of pat. You know, like, like you know, you wear pads. Um, you know, maybe not get into sparring with like you know a professional fighter like yeah the now first round. in fairness I, I, one thing i will say is that someone who's like a you know again a high level uh bjj fighter uh like you know brown belt that kind of thing they'll be very used to uh rolling with white belts yeah right and so there is an element of i will say that if you're if you're uh like and I, as and when i was i took you know karate those things pretty far yeah. as well and you know how to how yeah. to spar with someone below your level as well like recognize that um, that's actually part of the training it really is, yeah, is, yeah. is is to is know how to ease up right it gets a little bit different though if you're in a in a competitive event yeah. right and that's where it becomes really a bit important you know yeah. where you know, and I can think of some examples I competed at the provincial level and whatnot and was not not ready I had done it yeah. years before and I took a couple years off and then I'm like oh you know what I'll just like sign up for an open event yeah. that was that was like you know um, basically a qualifier for nationals and just got destroyed uh, and I was like okay uh, I wasn't the guy I was two years ago first of all number one um, but in that event obviously you know the, they're not holding back because they're competing for a, a position at, at, a, at the nationals right yeah. so I had those experience uh, so uh, anyway yeah so the the there is a difference between sparring and training and then then competing for sure oh yeah so uh, let's see if there's a few few comments here. We just have some comments about some of the technical thing. Um, this comment about scope in Indian wrestling. By the way, uh, <laughs> we're going to be live uh, for a few more minutes for sure, and we got a good number of viewers on. Feel free to just ask any questions. Uh, if you have any questions about power slap, if you have any questions about commissioning in sport, oh, if you have Dr. any questions about uh, uh, MMA, uh, we'll, we're happy to, to answer any of those uh, questions uh, as well. Um, so what does that mean scope in Indian wrestling? Well, yeah, this is an earlier question. Uh, <laughs> Simplest Medicine asked, uh, what about the scope in Indian wrestling? So I actually don't know anything about Indian wrestling. I'm not sure if it's a, uh, it's an event that uh, has different set of rules. I mean, we recognize that there are different, um, uh, like Muay Thai is something very different from yeah. MMA, which is something very different from, you know, BJJ, even though athletes from those various backgrounds might find themselves competing and a good example like yeah. wrestlers yeah. Uh, ha, for i mean maybe not right now but in the past have been, have been very dominant yeah uh, i, in, I, uh, I mean i'm not sure that's a real question but uh, i do think that wrestling probably dominates um most uh like wrestling is the most dominant uh pure sport that i think somebody can can can, can come from so you know for 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 mma yeah yeah, and I again, I used to wrestle. One of my interests, I used to be as a kid, really involved in a lot of uh, these events, and and uh, I, I enjoyed it. I, but there are there are personal risks. That's what we're talking about today: is is how to have fun and uh, have uh, you know the, the opportunity to compete yeah. in what is is essentially a violent uh, sport. And so here we are, two doctors uh, <laughs> talking about this violent activity, and that actually gives me this this question. We've talked, we've been touching on it, we've been kind of yeah. dancing around it. This idea of this tension, this ethical tension between being medicine healers mm. and uh, you know the violence of yeah. of sport. What's your thought on yeah. that? That tension? No, you know what I mean. I've, I've been dealing with that probably most of my career. I mean, most people have given you feedback yeah. on this. <laughs> well, the thing is, most most people I work with know that um, you know uh, it's. Uh, uh, you know what my enjoyments are outside of work and I mean I, I like training I like watching UFC I mean it is what it is and I I've had people say to me like how can you watch that uh, this is an exact quote from somebody a, a colleague I once said how can you watch that that's human cockfighting mm -hmm. and I said look if you enjoy kind of I, and I said well if you if you <laughs> enjoy gardening you don't see me criticizing you for that and if that's your thought then I mean you know you know that's fine but I don't and you know it's kind of funny because I don't we all have different interests that kind of make us quirky and and, and um, I'm different you know medicine is a hard job uh, it's a lot of you know you know stress there's a lot of focus on wellness burnout with the pandemic I mean everybody has experienced it and you need your different outlets you know for some guys maybe that's f1 some guys that's fishing but you know for me like I've you know training martial arts and I mean I mean this sincerely but there's something about martial arts and uh, that that I think is just very pure and very based on respect and humility and um, you know, and and uh, you know, the some of the greatest people I've met have been uh, just just from from training martial arts, and uh, you know, I'm always more drawn to them. They they're just more down to earth people. A lot of my friends over over the years have been people that I've met through uh, jujitsu class, uh, you know, and um, you know, so 
I think that it's, um, you know, yes, I think there is a difference, but I also do think that your role as a healer, what you do know, and, you know, a lot of the stuff I, I do for the commission, like it's pro bono, like, I mean, yeah. you know, I mean, just the looking at ECGs and saying this, this is okay, that's, that's, that's not. I mean, technically, there may even be a, a, a medical legal risk to me for signing right, off. Right. But, you know, you do it because, you know, at the, at the end of the day, you, you, you want to help people out. I mean, you want to see uh, people able to compete. You know, you want to see, see it done safely. And, you know, and, and if you can win, it's kind of, it's giving back the same way, uh, like what you described with that brown belt, you know, rolling with the white belt. Yeah. It's the same way that that person will then stop and say afterwards, you know, might, you might think about this move doing that way. And, you know, you know, it, that's a giving back or it's the same way that guy might then start teaching a beginner class. That's kind of, that's how it is for me. And I actually kind of joke with some of my, my friends and stuff like, I wear two white coats. You know, one is the lab coat, the other is the gi. Yeah, I love and, that. And you know, and uh, and you know, except when you're rolling no gi. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, so so like it's uh, and in one way, like you know, you have the power to kind of save a life, but you also have the knowledge to end one too. Mm. And I mean, it's it's a very, and I'm not saying it in a, like a crazed kind of way, but you, that's what you respect about about the art that you know, and that's why you know, I've never personally been in a real fight, nor do I look look to be in one. Um, well, they talk because, about it when because, you're a kid. It's good to give you the confidence to yeah. know what you are capable of. It makes you less likely to want to engage in that type of uh, yeah. contest, right? Oh, absolutely. You know? I think I think for a lot of folks, you know, fighting in general, um, you know, street fighting is usually a result of some level of insecurity. Mm. And I mean, but people who actually do train stuff, they have nothing to prove. I mean, if you can walk out of something, you will. Yeah. So... Uh, we're going to wrap up uh, pretty soon, but I want to say thank you once again yeah. for for your coming and and uh, joining us for this uh, for this live stream. But uh, the last thing I just want to talk about is again, like if you could say one message to the community of fighters yeah. that are out there um, that you think would be like positive considering like we're yeah. talking about the negatives of slap fighting and yeah. whatnot um like what would you encourage someone who is looking for the opportunity to to get out there and and become uh, a competitive athlete um would you would you say hey you know go for it it's like it, yeah. it's worth it for for you if you do it in the right safe way or would you say uh you know um Competitive sports, uh, you know, there's, there's a the high risk. Like you, you have a little, you have a little boy coming along. Uh, you, what would you say to your son if he wanted to do uh, combat sports? Oh, a, I didn't know that'd be on the screen, but, uh, <laughs> but yes, uh, yes, I do. And so, did you, I expose uh, that? Did I, did, uh, have we done the reveal party here? Maybe, yeah, yeah. I, maybe I broke some rules here. <laughs> no, 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 that's all good. Um, you know what I would say is uh, is this: I, it's not my place to tell somebody what to do with their life, you know. Um, but I would say in general, much like I've done with um you know just just sort of training martial arts being involved in the um you know uh, being a doctor being a cardiologist being involved in um uh you know uh, ringside work and all that stuff is i think people should always follow their passions mm -hmm. i'm not trying to be corny or cliche about that and i think you see where it takes you and you know i met some great folks that you know like um you know have sort of um you know are, are competing at high levels and MMA or, or um, uh, you know, jujitsu. And when you actually hear about what they did and the sacrifices they made at those early stages mm. um, and the passion they put into it, like, how can you not respect that? Yeah. And, you know, I think it's people have their own journeys in life. And I think, you know, martial arts can be a good avenue to take you certain places. Or like for people like me, it's just a good outlet. To, I meet good people. Um, you know, I, I learn stuff that I'm not particularly naturally good at. I try and get a little better for myself, um, and you know that's that's the fun of it. And I mean, it's something that's that's fun and fit. So it's not really for. But I would tell people that are, um, you know, looking to do that. I think, I think the world's changed. You know, back in the day, people would be a hockey player, or right, they would be right. like, you know. But now, like you know, people might be a D one wrestler right. and then move into tr to mixed martial arts. I think it's something that's on. And when you there look, there is at, a professional career yeah, available yeah. for people. But when you when you look sports. at people like George St Pierre or John Jones. Yeah. I'm sure they could have done any professional sport that they wanted to, but they chose MMA and they mm. did well at it. So they I were think true I, pioneers of that. Yeah, yeah. So so I think it's really what people want to do. But I think that if, if that's what they want to do, 
so be it. If they want to just be, <laughs> uh, if they want to be a you know middle aged cardiologist and, and train a little on the side too, nothing wrong with that. Yeah, nothing wrong with that. Oh, I love it. I love it. I need to get back into the into the yeah. uh, dojo again. Uh, yeah, yeah, it's been yeah. a little bit while. Well, Sabi, I wanted to say thank you again no, for uh, yeah. coming on to Knife Skills and sharing your opinion on power slap and really fighting in general from the perspective of a doctor who is there to ensure as best as possible the safety of these athletes that are awesome athletes yeah. and you want to see the best for them uh once again for you the audience that have been watching thank you for sticking around also i want to direct you to uh dr savvy day's blog uh fightmd.com the link is in the description of this video so check that out there's some yeah. great content there he talks about both cardiac issues concussion issues really they're yeah. uh, the whole gamut of yeah. fighting yeah. and yeah, I, I was just going to say it probably needs a bit of an update, but um, the the topics are still relevant. And who knows, uh, you know, who knows, Rich? Maybe you've kind of given me a little bit of a kind of kind of a. There's a few a things push, you could talk uh, about. There's uh, been some push, growth in that area. Yeah, you know, so maybe there's some new. Uh, it's time for an update, and maybe you've kind of given me a little bit of an itch to lace up the gloves and get back into the blogosphere. Awesome, and, I love uh, it. You know, but uh, but no, thanks for having me on. I've I watched quite a few of your. Uh, your your um, your videos and I think you've done a great job so uh, you know like I would say I think I think there's a lot of commonality here and I think that what you're doing is clearly a passion project and I think you know you just gotta you know I think keep doing what you're doing and I think that these discussions uh, you know they're never meant to be offensive or um, you know I but I think that there are discussions that need to be had um, you know, you, you know, in general. So, you know, um, so, so thanks for having me. Awesome. It's been a pleasure. Thank you. All right. Well, once again, thank you guys for sticking around. Um, this is, we're here really for you, the audience and, uh, the nice skills fans. So have a great day.